becoming an entrepreneur, just one key thing that is just like, what do they need to understand when it comes to entrepreneurship? You got to believe in yourself. When, when nobody else is, you got to you gotta fall in love with it. You got to wake up every day. No matter if you get one likes or 200, you got to know that you you the one. And it's going to take off and be consistent. Because there's going to be times where nobody clapping for you. And you still going to have to clap for yourself. I'm just getting my flowers at nine years. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. everybody know Tate now. But like you said, you probably came to some of my events and didn't even know who I was back then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, people get their flowers just a matter of time, but it's about being consistent even when nobody's seeing you or clapping for you and showing up for yourself. Absolutely. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We are back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I go by CEO Peso. Very blessed and highly favored. Live from Moves Media right now. I hope y'all feeling great. I have a guest in the building. I'm going to just set the tone for it right now. Somebody that I admire and look up to, I met her uh, officially. It was um, our Fit and All series at the Neon. Jason invited you, yep. and he had introduced us. And, you know, it was just good vibes from there, though. Um, staple in the city, somebody that is like reconstruction, the landscape of how entrepreneurs move. This is about to be a lot of entrepreneur talk for people. So tap in. Can you please introduce yourself for the for the people? Um, I'm Tay Winston. I just consider myself a serial entrepreneur here. Let's go. <laughs> serial entrepreneur. Killing <laughs> shit. Nah, um, thank you for coming on my platform. Absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, with the schedule and everything, like like when we walked in here, it was like, yo, yo month's been crazy. So, you know. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I believe in due time, it, it's always God's time to just how it's set That's up because you, you had a lot more going on since we was initially going to do the pod. Yes. So it's a lot more to talk about. Yes. And don't be mad at me, y'all, if I don't touch on everything because she's a very busy woman with a lot of accolades under her belt. So we're going to get into as much as we can for y'all. So to start it off, just to break the ice, who is Miss Tay and the upbringing and, you know, just where you from, born and raised, and how was it on your upbringing? Um, so I'm, again, I'm Tay. Um, I just feel like I'm just, i always been a giver, which is what, I do for a living for my businesses or whatever. My upbringing was my family was pretty much entrepreneurs too. My mom and dad worked, but they were go getters. They used to have boat rides and sips and everything. So me growing up was passing out flyers, putting them on cars and going to different parties early. with them and early. Yeah. So it was already in me. And my daddy is definitely a go getter. And my mom, she's just a hustler. That's why she's my assistant now. And, um, I was just raised by hustlers, you know, just seeing people not only work at a job, but doing other things to get money, just being super ambitious. So Absolutely. Yeah. I, did you say what age at this was you doing, like, the flyers and everything? We was out at six years old in our pajamas at nighttime, hitting cars on the weekends. Okay, <laughs> and at that time, I'm I'm thinking that was just, like, fun to y'all. Yeah, it was. It was It was definitely just fun at that time. Period, period. Yeah. Okay, in the bloodline of some hustlers, though. Absolutely. So, well, obviously, but you got exposed at a young age is just how, you know, to go out there and get it type of everything. For sure. So, can you speak on... You you know, kind of like your first memory of like when you was solidifying, like, okay, as small as it can be or whatever, like when you was like, you about to be a business owner. Um, yeah. So I, I worked in um, mental health for nine years and I was a case manager and it was cool, but I just knew it wasn't for me. I just knew it. And, um, I had a kid with autism or whatever, and I couldn't do both. I couldn't go to work and go home to it. I always knew I love fashion and people mm-hmm. always would call me for advice on what to put on. So I was like, I would kill it if I opened a boutique. I'm like, because I got it. I know style. You know, I know it looked good on people and everything. So I just start ordering clothes while I was at work, mm-hmm. researching, you know, working my way to get up out of there. And I end up buying a bus and turning it into a boutique or whatever. And, um, yeah, it was a it was a boutique on wheels. I would work with, like, news people and everything and it just took off it took off faster than i wanted it to and i was just like i'm gone plus my job would make me feel bad for having a kid with autism you know if the teachers call they'll be upset you know what i mean like you know dang you better have to leave and i'm like yeah like ain't nothing i can do <laughs> like, right right you, got, you gotta God be there did, you know so all of that just helped me just leave and i was scared like a lot of people be scared but i wasn't too scared i was ready and i just left i knew i had enough saved and i was gone and that's what started the journey 
So, okay, in the process of you feeling like you was ready to leave there, you kind of already premeditated, like, all right, I'm going to leave with this at a certain time and everything, instead of just, you know, just, like, fuck the shit, I'm out pretty much. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely played chess and made sure I left when that bank account looked good enough for me to pay some <laughs> rent for a little while. Fair. You know, just in case it didn't take off as fast. And I left my job on a good note, too, where I could go back if I needed to. Or okay. whatever, but graceful exit, just, absolutely. <laughs> Gracefully, them two, putting them two weeks. Luckily, I never have to go back, but I did put on them two weeks just in case. But I was like, I can do better. I'm gone, and okay. with no looking back. So I want to tap back into. Um, you said that you couldn't handle both with, uh, you know, um, with your with your child, mm-hmm. and then um, balancing the workout. So, how just how long how long did you stay there? Well, at what point you said you was there? Nine, was year, nine years. Nine years. Yep. So, at what what point? What year point was it? Where you was like, man, I, I gotta like, I gotta like, come up with another game plan. It was like on my like eighth year in the middle um, of that or whatever. I gave myself six months to leave on that eighth year. Okay. I was like, I'm out in six months. I'm about to save. I didn't go nowhere. I I told everybody no. And stack mm-hmm. my money. I'm like, no, them parties. I'm like that anyway, though, now. But I'm like, no, them parties is going to be there and all that. I'm, I I got to go. So I'm going to say we ain't, we ain't banning them bags and stuff right now. We're going to stack. The, the discipline. <laughs> discipline. Discipline, for sure. For sure, yeah. So with the boutique, it sounds like you didn't even, like, um, compress yourself into just, like, urban. You said you was working with, like, news people. Like, yeah. just a whole bunch, bunch of people. Yeah. So how did you start to... Put your word out with the um, with the uh, boutique on wheels. I think as, as you said it, it started. How did you start tackling into like just the different markets of people? Um, I think I was just going to networking events. That's the one thing that people don't understand. Networking is so important, and people always think stuff is about money. But I network whether it had money involved or not because I needed to meet new people. So I was showing up anywhere that I seen might have had a crowd, and I was passing out flyers, letting people go to my website and everything, and it just was taking off. It, I just kept building my following. My following just got crazy. People like how I looked. Because I feel like you got to show up as you if you want to do something. You got to look mm-hmm. the part. So people had already liked what I had on and everything like that. So that alone was just like, oh, I can't wait to see what you got because, you know, I done seen what you wear and everything. And we just start networking. And yeah, the friend request came. Those followers came. And it just took off. You know, I find that funny that you say that because a lot of people don't understand that. Like, even like on an off day, I still try to come to par yeah. of like who I didn't build my my brand to be. Absolutely, because it comes down to that nitty gritty of like, if, I mean, first impression, best impression is probably first one of the one of the best yeah. quotes ever, though. But that can take you a long way. Like, Definitely. no matter where ain't you at. you don't know who you're going to see. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, especially when you have a name. Ain't no more just running a Kroger and looking a mess. Like, no, nah. we know the whole day. And so, <laughs> baby, right. if I run a Kroger and look a mess, I'm going to see about 10 people. They probably yep. going to take pictures of me. She don't even look the same or all that. So, nah. Yeah. I Listen, I don't care if it's 7 in the morning. I'm going to look halfway decent. Nah, fact. I ain't going with no slides, high socks, and whatever. Nah, I'm putting on... Something that still just look, even if it's as simple as shit, Absolutely. still me out here if you yeah. want to talk, network. Like you said you can network in Kroger's or at the gas station for all I care. Absolutely. Nah, that's a fact. Yeah. Um, you are your brand. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get into the branding, too. Um, so I, I seen, too, that uh, uh, from the boutique, um, you, you end up getting a storefront, actually, after that. Because I seen mm-hmm. that you started, like, going, you were selling, uh, what, 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 I got it, I'm sorry. It was uh, the frames. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's how I started. I started with sunglasses. I love sunglasses. It's crazy because I haven't even worn none in so long. But I, I started with sunglasses. That was the first thing I took a chance on doing. And then it just went to clothes after that. But yep, I started as Frames Boutique and then it went to Fashion Remedy. Okay. So, yeah. Yep, yep. So from, you know, starting with the Boutique on Wheels and everything, okay. then, then the Frames and all of that, um, obviously, you know, you scaled that up into being like very successful businesses. Um, when, what was the transition to where you felt like I could, you do more, like you wanted more? Um, 
I started having pop up shops or whatever. We, I was like one of the first to do it. Me and a girl named Ashley Kinsley. Uh, we were the first to like pretty much bring them here, and we would just like rent out places and do it. And I had loved the idea of helping businesses. Like when people would be set up with me, they would sell out too. So we was all getting money, and I was just like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? Like people getting booked for catering jobs. You know what I mean? Like vendors don't have nothing left on their table, and I'm like, oh, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I can make a business out of this. Like people are winning just from being under my umbrella. So from that is how I got the marketplace because it was a one-stop shop. It was eight different businesses under one roof. It was a chef in there and it was different um, retail people. We just, I was in there getting money under one space. Okay. And so that was the start. That's crazy. You answered my question. So um, the mar marketplace, market shop. Yeah. What you, Wait. Yep, the marketplace was the first one, the entrepreneur's marketplace. And that's the spot that had everybody in yep, there. Yep, the food and everybody in it. The mar the entrepreneur's shop, which is open now, has 30 businesses inside of that one. But the marketplace had food and vendors. But the difference was they were set up at tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. So it was like going to a pop-up shop. The entrepreneur shop is like a retail store. There's big shelving and stuff. There's no tables or nothing. There's, right. There's shelves and stuff in there. Okay. So with the marketplace... How did you go about um, the selecting the, the businesses and individuals that you chose to have in there? Um, I know when I first got started, I seen Jasmine Brown from Delish. We talked about it. So she um, came back and started selling her egg rolls. And I just linked up with the few people that I seen that were go-getters. You know, the hungriest people is who I wanted. It's still who I want. I like the people that I know is going to be serious and really, you know, want to thrive. So I would just see the people who I seen working the hardest, like, hey, I got this space. You want to come in here? You know, mm -hmm. you don't got to meet people and ride around no more. You could have an address and have people come to you. Okay. So it just worked like that. And and I'm assuming some of these was, uh like you said, it was go-getters and grinders, but mm -hmm. they were still, um, with all due respect, still at just a small scale of what they was doing, yep. but thriving in there. Yeah, thriving. Whether I get the credit or not, thriving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thriving. Like, literally life-changing, thriving, like. And that yeah. came from you just building up your brand. Of, Absolutely. Like, you, put, you put yours out there. I just want yep. people to get the, the structure of how, how yep, it plays so I, out. And then and another thing, too, I closed my boutique once I opened or whatever because I had just felt like I was ready to educate people and show people the way I had already, like, hit my success level. So I pretty much gave my following to others. So anyone that was following me and everything, they were coming in my store to support other people mm -hmm. or whatever. So you know what I mean? And, I mean, I'm sure other people have followers, too, but the whole vision and everything just came together and it just worked and – People definitely were thriving for period, sure. Period, period. So now with the shop, I seen an article that you had uh, put up, um, and basically you had said in there, uh, "quote unquote," um, over thirty businesses selling things like clothing, jewelry, and anything else you could think of. Mm -hmm. So, so scaling up to the thirty businesses that's in there, right? Um, does that become a headache? Absolutely. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Like just, just. It becomes a headache. It becomes a headache for me because you have the ungrateful people. You have the people that's not doing the work and then blame it on you because they're not where you are. But then you, but you look on their page and all they posting is club pictures and mm -hmm. partying. You don't even know they sell nothing. But it's still your fault because they're in your store. So some people sometimes think, oh, but she has a following, so I'm going to thrive anyway because I'm under her roof. Yeah. Not knowing that they have to do the work, too. Like, you don't even give me nothing to share. You're not restocking. You're not doing the work. And so that's where it gets stressful at because, you know, but some people, the people that do the work, you know, because they're doing good now. They've left me. They have their own food trucks, restaurant, or boutique and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some other people that left me, you don't hear about them no more, and they're just it's probably not where they need to be. Not saying it's not saying I made everybody great, but I know the people that was going to be great, like Anthony, like Chan. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. was only with me for a couple of months. He he messaged me, got his food truck. He's in the food hall. Yeah. He's opened a restaurant and everything. Philip Morgan, he has a restaurant. I got other people that have boutiques and stuff. So, you know, the results is there if you want it, but it's the people that's entitled and feel like they ain't got to do all the work. I mean, let's just <laughs> call a spade a spade. It's just lazy motherfuckers. Yeah, though, because. It is. And I think that's that's pretty asinine as well as like people not really understanding like the social media to this day to this day is very important on how you 
promote your stuff. Absolutely. Very important. I mean, I should be able to look on any one page and know what they do. Anyone can come on my page and be like, oh, okay, she helps entrepreneurs. She has a store. and Oh, she's about to open a club and stuff like that. They will know. But if I come on your page and all I see is twerk videos and you drinking and stuff. and Fashion I don't know statements. What, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know what you got. I mean, how am I going to support you? You know what I mean? And it's just like, that ain't my fault that... It's not that important to you. You're not restocking or you're not promoting yourself. It's deeper than just putting your stuff in my store. So then a lot of people leave me and they turn weird and make it like animosity, like it's a problem. When I did the work, I only offered you a location to thrive and everything like that. It was up to you to take Step advantage of that. Yeah. So. I tell people that all the time, like respectfully, like take advantage of me. Yeah, take advantage of me. Yeah, like, if, <laughs> but if do so, the work. No, yeah, absolutely, you do the work for sure. Yeah. But take advantage of the opportunities because when people are giving you platforms and stepping stones like that, right? Y'all people got to really put the work in after to be absolutely. under a wing of somebody that can really elevate you. you know? Yeah. So w was it always the intentions of you know just people can come and leave, or do you still people? That still have people there that are solidified in there still just i still have people there that's, that's been there since i opened or whatever some people you know they just love it it feels like home to them and i'm okay with it i do like you know i mean sometimes i ask people to leave because it's not about money and if they're not progressing it's just a waste of my time you know what i mean so mm -hmm. those people are when i um, get to bring new people in but some people are thriving and they don't want to pay rent at a regular store and i'm okay with them staying because they're just like no i don't want to pay rent I'm not ready for that. This works for me. I give you a certain amount and I bow. So I want to stay <laughs> Let's here. Go. Let's go. <laughs> and, and they don't have to be there. So all of these people are still working and living their life. I have a manager there. She sells out her products. So they just get a payout every week. Okay. So without even being there. Dope, dope. <laughs> so it's just as long as they got their ducks in a row on yep. restocking and, and, you know. And they're promoting. Yeah. And then checking their sales and making sure everything's cool. They're good. Period. Get your Good. payout. Make sure you promote your shit. Yep. You ever had to kick anybody out? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. I mean, it, I, I, jokingly, but at the same time, it's yeah. just like that's a part of just, you know, being a business owner, boss, entrepreneur. Yeah. Them are the people that the make The uncomfortable about shit. Me. Yeah. Them are the people that's, that make status about me and, oh, it's her fault. Yeah. <laughs> Tay's Tay's a monster and she this this that no no matter how many people I built up. But one thing I can say is that you can't really tear me down on social media because I have people that's gonna fight for me. Cause if people know me and they know my true intentions, they know that's just coming from bitterness and it's not facts. So, you know, it's it's about four or five people that's the hate Tay Winston Club and the half of the time <laughs> it's because I tried to help them and they wasn't ready, so it's oh we hate her. We we can't stand her, and it's just those five out of the whole scene. Yeah, take your accountability, motherfuckers. Uh -uh. But, um, but now nah, what I do want to say is, um, ah, damn, what was it? Ah, damn, it was right on, ah, right there. Um, yeah, I mean, that just comes with, like, like I said, I just want people to understand just the, the entrepreneur side of it. It teaches you to have these uncomfortable conversations or have these transparency moments with people because. Your name is on it and trying to deteriorate you. And let's be honest, like it's going to take a army to try to bring people down, especially For like, sure. like, you know what I mean? Like sure. I've got slander and it's like, Man, yo, six, seven likes ain't about this. Yeah, and that's enough. <laughs> like, Especially when I done done so much for the community. I fed dating for years and shown up in so many ways that it's like, yeah, it's it, you try to tear me down. First of all, God knows, and the community knows. Like I've I've shown up too many times. First off, you, God. Yeah. First off, God. That's all I always yeah. say. Like, he hey, always man, God know it. my intentions. So <laughs> long as God with me and He know my heart was pure, I'm okay with it. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. yeah, and and the people that slander me, they always come back. They always. Try to come back so that'd be the other thing i'm this terrible monster but then a year later they want to be in the fashion meets food truck rally or come back in the store and i'm like oh i thought i was so terrible are oh, you out of your feelings now yeah. okay gotcha you know <laughs> i i got this quote yeah. i got this quote that i i don't i i don't know if i came up with it but it, i'm humbly speaking but it's like you'll mm -hmm. need me before i need you yeah and i say that in the sense of like yep i don't deteriorate relationships that i have or even if something went sour like you know same What's the, what's the, what's the quote people you see on the way up you see on the way down? Yes. Some yes. Yeah, so yeah. so it's just like if you got the best intentions of it and you want to break off and it's going to be like Yep. You're going to need me at the end of the day. Like yeah, if you think like, that it's, it, I'm the downfall of your success. Yep. 
which is bullshit. Which is bull crap. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with you being so, I got two questions with this though. You're so involved with scaling up the city of Dayton and how you wholeheartedly help these people by choice. Mm-hmm, by choice, because you you started off on your own and building your own it, brand. Probably would have been a billionaire, okay? Yeah, it was thriving. So, <laughs> what what makes you like very confined on just helping out the city of Dayton? Because I really genuinely want better. Like I really love seeing people start with me, like Chan and others, and move up. Like it helps me sleep at night. Like I freaking love it. So the good outweighs the bad. When I get all these stories, like oh my god, tell I'm about to quit my job and take that chance. And then with me doing Tay Winston Consulting now, I'm actually getting people in in their own buildings and like. You know, just really seeing people from start to finish. And that just, it does something to my spirit. I love Mm -hmm. it. I love it no matter how much others tear me down or stress me out. I guess it's God because I still love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I still love it. Nah, period. And my (laughs) other question with that was, um, you know, what what I do, I felt like it was better for me to leave Dayton to, you know, build up. Yeah. But a lot of a lot them questions are always asked of like if you you had the chance to leave the city but you haven't, why is that? Yeah, um, I don't think I haven't, and I think I'm not gonna say I'm gonna be here forever or whatever. But I still I haven't left because I feel like I still got work to do. I want to see Dayton be a certain way before I decide to move. I want to see some some changes being um been done you know i work real close with the mayor all the time commissioners and all of that plus i feel like they need me a lot of business owners are going through stuff when it comes to bad landlords or people treating them bad and a lot of city officials ain't always doing the work so Mm -hmm. a lot of these times i've been having to be that in between and step up and be behind the scenes doing the work to take care of my people so it's just not time you know what i mean yeah so i i don't want to leave until i until i know like I, I planted mm-hmm. seeds here and I did what I needed to do. I mean, at this point, you got a fucking forest growing, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now nah, I feel it though. Uh, hold on. So, uh, Tay from Air comes on. Or was <laughs> Check. Yeah, look, people come Politics? Up to me. People come up to me 24 7, Tay for commissioner, and my mom be like, no, please don't do it and stuff like that. And you know what? I don't know. I'm going to just follow my heart or whatever. Sometimes I want to. Sometimes I don't because it's like, it's no pleasing dating. You know, sometimes. Sometimes I feel like. I'm a, am I going to be more stressed out or whatever? Am mm. I am I better off behind the scenes still doing the commissioner work without being that? Or, you know what I'm saying, should I jump in? So that's my daily battle is, will my city actually appreciate me for the stress that come with this? Because if I get in, I'm going to do the work. Me personally, I would think that it would be significantly different and dope because, you know, a lot of these people now, I mean, it's different when you actually know somebody be like, are oh, they about to – do this and try to be in this position. It just, right. it would hit different. I mean, right. I'm not trying to segue you like, Hey, you no, should do this, uh-uh. but I like, you know, cause Chance said out every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I don't even, I mean, no, I don't personally know who the mayor is or, you know, on the board or, or uh-huh. commissioners or whatever the uh-huh. case is. So I just think that's just a personal thought of like and seeing somebody be, yeah. tangible, like, Oh shit, she doing it. Like for sure. And I'm going to still show up. So that's the thing. Of course I can't be anywhere, but I'm, it would, if I become the commissioner, I'm, I'm going to be at all the small businesses, checking on them. I'm going to be in the hood. I ain't going to be too good. So that's what makes me different is that, yeah, I'm going to be tangible. People are going to know me, and I'm going to make sure people are straight. I'm not going to just be sitting in the office chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be really sh- making sure I make a difference. So Vote, vote for Tay Wisner. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Pray for me. <laughs> I don't know. Not so, okay, even building these relationships yeah. with, um, you know, the commissioner and the mayor and everything, uh, everything that you got going on. Mm-hmm. What was your steps of, like, crossing over into that lane of having them type of connections because – you know, did you feel like you had to have your businesses established and your brand established before you even would approach any of these? Like that, it actually came to me. 
Word. I think, yeah, I think Con- that. Confined you, making noise. I yeah, get it. I think they, I think I didn't ever even reach out to commissioners and, and people or city officials. They just always knew me. And I think it was just because a lot of my stuff went viral. A lot of news always posted me and stuff like that. So I just ended up having relationships with them. I would be placed and they'd be like, hey, Tay, when something like, oh, hey, you know, how are you? And they would end up calling me for like help with their campaigns and stuff like that or whatever. So it just ended up just going that way. Or whatever. Yeah. And then once I got close with them, I just start holding them accountable. Like, okay, yeah, you the commissioner. This person's having a problem here and there. What's up? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, and that even comes along with being on some boards or whatever. Like, I'm on boards and stuff to hold people accountable to show up for dating. For sure. Let's go. Yeah. All right. You, you, we said we was talking about off, off, we was talking about that off camera, but you, um, you said you on 15 boards. Yes. And. I, I know some the man. I can't disclose some. I can't. Pretty cool. I mean, well, what what can you disclose then? I I can talk about the ones I'm allowed to talk about, or whatever. Like I'm, it's like I'm on the chief advisory board. Um, I sit with the chief of police every month. That one is good because you know we get to hold the police accountable. So mm-hmm. anything that's unfair, I tell people tag me on Facebook when you see anything that's unfair or anything, and I get to sit at that table and be like, hey, what's up with that? You yeah. know, y'all got to answer to me and my community. Why did this police harass them? You know, everything like that. So I love that. Um, Human Services Levy is another one I love. Um, That Human Services Levy pays for places like Boys and Girls Club, Children's Services, the Wesley Center. They fund them and keep them open. So I'm glad to be a part of that because the kids need it. So I love that one, too. That one's pretty important. Um, Queens Village is a public health board for mothers and babies where we provide resources and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm on the City of Dayton board where we're um, uh, on the business side or whatever, where we're doing stuff to rebuild date and make date in a better place. So I'm moving around and it's crazy because I don't talk about a lot of this on my page and stuff. And people, I was like, she ain't busy. She ain't that busy. She just run a store. <laughs> All she got is an entrepreneur shop. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> okay. No, I, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's so you say. like you say, it's not up to you. I, and I appreciate you, the transparency of what you can talk about on it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not up to you to just put up every accolade or thing no. that has been presented. Yeah, and, it, it's crazy. and I don't do it for bragging anyway. No, not at all. You know, not but when you're, that, I mean, but it sucks like when you in friendships or dating, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm single, and that's why, you know, friendships change because people don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, and I've just been really, it's really been important for me to find people that match me and fit my lifestyle because if not, you're not going to get it. I don't need clingy friends or a clingy man or nothing like that. You know what I mean? We got <laughs> to match. For seriously, I love we got to yeah. match each other because you ain't back to just be harassing me why ain't i at home with you playing video games all day because this ain't that you know what i mean so say that you know men men be crying too and why ain't i seeing you in two days because i'm out here doing the work just because you clocking out and get off at five and go home and freak your freak your black and play video games hey you the The specifics is crazy (laughs) because like like, no like just because you work and go home I don't have that. I fall asleep with my laptop in my bed sometimes at hey, three in the morning. It's it's I, it's a real grind. I was just um uh I was just telling B that uh shouts out to B uh, owner of Napoleons. Mm-hmm. I was just telling him, you know, the, the crazy thing is like for what we do, I mean, we we have to take time to ourselves, but we don't got no we don't got no clock out. We don't have no clock out. Like and, and it's crazy you mentioned re- relationships because <laughs> I'm, I'm thank you for bringing that up, but um I don't think a lot of people understand that too is like. When you so tunnel vision on like already having your brand built to where it's at, it is hard to have a relationship. It is because that that amount of stress alone, whether it's the smallest shit, be like, man, what the fuck is you on right now? Yeah, like what? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and I just don't need that stress. You know what I mean? And it's so funny because people come into your life knowing you're busy, but then expect you to not be so busy for them. And I'm big on making time, but you just ain't about to see me every day, all day. Like, I'm not. Like, go get you somebody that work, too. Absolutely. Yeah, go find a chick at Wendy's or something. Whoa, whoa. That, this ain't, at least give them uh, Miami Valley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, men love women they can take care of. So, you know, Wendy's was the one for me. Yeah, you know? keep that biggie bag. <laughs> <laughs> Free nuggets. <laughs> now, uh, May 5th, you have uh, Food Trucks meet, Meets Fashion. Yeah. And you explained your um, expertise and love for the fashion side. So... What made you want to decide to? Oh, you know what? I had a question before that, real okay. quick. Yeah. Um, when you on these boards, and then you are bringing these um, 
um, like the 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 public real public feedback from what people are telling you. When you present these uh, problems or whatever to these people on the board, mm -hmm. are you seeing significant changes after? Absolutely. Okay. And they know I ain't gonna play because I'm gonna follow up. Hey, what's what's the deal? Would you decide on that? Even if they gaslight me and be like, I'll get back with you. I mean, they email a couple of days later. Cause some, cause I feel like I have to explain stuff to people too. Like my community inboxing me these issues. So I owe them an explanation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't just leave them on red. So I'm like, Hey, what's up? What do you want me to report back to the people? And what can we do different? So yeah, most of the time they do have to show up. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to just get an oh, insight yeah. on that too, because. I mean, I know, like you said, I, I know that you're going to do your due diligence, but I just want to know, is it oh, really, they yeah, are they yeah. really pulling through? Because, like, a lot of people complain about the city in certain situations, things yeah. like that, so. They ain't uh, always pulling through, which is why sometimes I do consider it, you know. It's a lot more that can be done. I make some phone calls sometimes, and, and they forget about it, just go on with their life, and it be real-life situations, and that irks my soul, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's the stuff that makes me want to step up and run and do that, you know what I mean, to really make a difference. Yeah. Cause the work ain't always done, but period. Yeah. Um, fashion meat food truck May fifth. Okay, what made you combine them two? And you know, the food truck rallies that you do. You've been doing that for a minute as well. Yeah, when I started food truck rallies, food trucks wasn't even a thing here. Like it wasn't a big popular thing. And big we was cities, going, yeah. you know what I mean. I was yeah. having to go to Yellow Springs and stuff to go to a food truck rally, and I'm like, wait, what? Why we don't have that here? You know what I mean? And it was limited food trucks. People wasn't even having food trucks, so I was having to reach out to like Cincinnati, and that's how I got connected with like Shrimp Lips in Columbus and stuff, because it wasn't even a thing here. It's popular now. Everybody, you know, got to have food trucks and all of that stuff, but it wasn't really a big thing. And I'm like, I want to bring that back to Dayton, mm -hmm. and I was like, but I want to put a twist on. On it because you know us people we love shopping and all of that so i was like why not do food trucks and fashion yep. and it was just and it just went crazy because it didn't exist like every for the most part everything i've done it was it didn't exist when it came here it was unheard of mm -hmm. or whatever you know what i'm saying now it's nothing i mean everybody's having festivals and stuff now yeah. but like when i first started it was just crazy and that's why i started it because it wasn't happening in dayton dayton was just Doing Gone. date, yeah, yeah, just regular <laughs> yeah. dating restaurants and all that yeah. shit or whatever. Because it's shouts out to all the food trucks and people who actually are diving into that to for sure follow up with it because it, supporting local businesses that got good ass food, good on, food, like for sure. And it ain't no overhead on the food truck, so it's a blessing. Period. Yeah, you ain't paying no rent. You just putting up game on that. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. So. Um. Like it's, uh, okay, that's why I want to ask you too. Mm -hmm. Receive proclamation from the mayor and the city of Dayton for Right Dunbar Day. Mm -hmm. How was that? Like just it, mm -hmm. uh, receiving that and actually pulling through and that happening. It was crazy because I received two in the same year. That was the tape year I got Tate Winston Day too, and it was that's just my next one. Oh, okay, but I'm just saying the feeling was just crazy because like. I mean, people host events all the time. So for them to just see that in me, that that was just so major to, to make Wright Dunbar Day my day, it was important. But it was a lot of value in it. I used to go to Wright Dunbar as a kid. My aunt owned a hair salon over there, and I was around. It was Urban Nights. And it would always make me sad that it was gone. I'm like, Wright Dunbar is just like nothing no more. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, when I got over there, it was rebuilding back up, and more people were interested in, you know, coming and everything like that. And it just made me feel good or whatever but um that felt good because i'm not the only one that hosts events but my events definitely be packed and people have a good time like mm -hmm. that day I, that year i got the proclamation it was like five thousand people out there Hell it was like, yeah it was crazy <laughs> and it was just like it was overwhelming that day and it was interesting because i that was the day i kind of had some issues in right dunbar because you know you go through times and not feeling appreciated too you know people people don't show you love where you at you know they don't they don't want to give your it's credit teeth, that yeah. you, they don't want to give your credit that you you made things happen in in their area and stuff like that and you know sometimes they get to talking to you crazy and stuff so it was a bad day actually that day with some of the people that worked through right Dunbar, but you know, for the mayor to come out and give me that, it just made it all better. Like, woo, okay, I'm appreciated. Cool. Shit. Let art, me brush that you know, off. Artists came and bring out five thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. So that, that that's amazing just to get that love and appreciation. Yeah. Tay Winston Day. Um, how do first off, how did that come about getting it into what come what to you, what does Tay Winston Day consist of and what is it 
meaning to the city of Dayton? So when I asked Mayor why me when it comes to getting it, he said he's just been watching me for years, and he said that other people have been coming to him for years, even before he came to Mayor, like, you got to meet Tay Winston. You got to meet her. She's done a lot for Dayton. She's fed us. She's done all this or whatever. So they actually showed up at my food truck rally with it. I didn't even know I was getting it or whatever, and it just meant the world to me. I'm like, dang, I got a holiday? Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I just do the work. I don't expect stuff in return. I'm just out here doing the work every day. And Tay Winston Day is important to me because I'm always based around giving back. So my this year I plan on pulling out our food truck, giving out free hot dogs, and you know what I mean, just like finding ways to give back to the community. I'm gonna always take my holiday to give back, you know. So Period. we're planning now what that looks like, but it's big, like it's it's important, and I'm never going. I'm humble about it, and I'm never going to, um, you know, like I just appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. I like the fact that you just said my holiday. Like, not too many people can say that. Like, that just yeah, sounded so it, major. It feels super good. And then, um, um, uh, where am I at with it? Uh, right, ah, uh, uh, damn, did I have? I do have in my notes. Oh, uh, right, Dunbar Black Party. Okay. June twenty third. Yep. Um. So I was like very fucking dope, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, because I was out of town a lot, and I, I was able to make one oh, shuffle through you? there. Hell yeah, okay. I was just shuffling through. I'm like. Man, the city got a lot offering, and I think this was before I actually had, like met you. Okay. Or even though that you was throwing it, it just I think my homegirl told me about it though. Okay. So when you having these uh, events, what's like some key factors to like keep in mind when you are like to making sure that everybody is gonna come out and have a good time. It's, it's marketing. Key factor is marketing. And I start marketing early. A lot of people, when they host events, they start like a week before going hard. You're going to know about these events for three months. You know what I mean? And um, just building a relationship with the media. I'm, I'm real close with all the news reporters and um, everything like that. And I just, yeah, but marketing is it. Like, Period. You know, you got to know how to bring the people out. You got to. Yeah. And you got to start early. And I'm assuming you got a team that help you with mm -hmm. I have a girl that helps me with setup, but what, you, it's all you. Yeah, a, that's why I don't get no rest or nothing. No, I don't have a team, but you know what? I want a team. So my my goal for next year is to be able to come up to my events when everything's done. I don't mm -hmm. want to do setup and stuff no more. I I'm praying to get a team that handles setup, get everybody ready, and do all of that, and I can actually one year just enjoy my events. Mm -hmm. That is the freaking goal. Like, can I just, I don't even eat at my event or nothing. Like, I've never even ate at a food truck and relaxed, ever. It's just facilitating it. Yeah, Man, just, you're making just it look, making you make sure it look easy. Thank you, you. I'm glad you you able to be transparent with that because a lot of people think would think that you have this plethora of, no. you know, people. Yeah. Besides my mom, my mom helps. She helps with contracts. And I bought her a food truck, Chase Concession, so she can't even help me at the events no more. So she I'm out there getting it, yeah, getting, it on. There getting <laughs> yeah. hot dogs and stuff ready. Yeah. So it's me and Ashley Bass. We um we're out there setting people up and everything. But yeah, I am ready for a team. I want an assistant. I had an assistant before, but I was totally crossed, totally mm. crossed. Attentions was bad. Everything was for her good, so that went bad. But I do want an um, assistant, and I do want a team for my events. I do here in due time when in it's due right. Time. Um. And then balancing out the uh, business coaching. Now okay. you have you touched on it earlier, but business consulting, mm -hmm. business branding, mm -hmm. business marketing, and LLC startups. Mm -hmm. So even with you doing that, um, like do you, so with your days, do you just have specific days where you just prioritize like? Like doing a coaching and everything, or is this just like nope. an everyday thing? It's every day after three. So pretty much in the mornings, I'm uh, I got a contract with YWCA for my consult, and I consult with them for community resources. So I do that from like I don't really have to be there though. I can work remote. But I do that usually from like 7 to maybe 12. Mm. And then I go check on the shop because my um, sister manages the entrepreneur shop on 3rd. And then from 3 until probably like 6.30, I um, do some business coaching and stuff like that. And you that. doing that in person? Nope, I do it on Zoom unless they oh, so, need me in person. Oh, so it's an option yep. damn near. Uh, like if, if I'm doing something like helping them with their business page or something, some stuff is in person. But just offering advice and stuff, I'll send them a Zoom link or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, I, this is great, by the way. But um, a question that just is overall. But mm -hmm. 
what makes dating just so great to still just have the belief of trying to help these people? Um, I guess it's because it's my hometown and I hate seeing people be like, ain't nothing to do in dating or we got to go to Cincinnati and we got to go here. It irks me. I hate those posts. I hate dating. I can't wait to move. Mm. And I just always felt like I could make a difference. Like it irks me so bad or whatever. And I just like, I'm from here and we can do better. And I just still believe we can do better no matter how many people cross me or no matter what I go through, I just still be feeling like dating deserve better. And Absolutely. I'm just, I wake up every day crazy, feeling like I can make it better. I ain't going to hold you. I, as a, at a young age, I was that person. Yeah, I, mean, I was blessed to be able to go to college out of, out of state that, okay. that expanded my horizons of it. But then I, I think that was, like, that was like 2010 when I went to college. Your but. column is bigger, though. So... Well, you gotta you gotta move around a little bit more. My column is bigger too, but not right now. But you're you're recording movies and all of that stuff, whatever. I don't expect you to just sit and dating. Like your column isn't well, just yeah, space and, for dating. And, and, and later on, that's when I realized like I kind of had to leave. Yes, because I wouldn't have got the expertise. Yes, being here. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you 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 make movies and and videos and stuff great, and I'm talking about great. Thank you. So thank you. You you can't just be stationed here. I'm building up my my business builds up dating, so I have to be here versus you. I can I'm gonna see you been everywhere. We we always say like he gone. Thank you. Thank you. It's gonna so go good. crazy. Yeah, and it, it uh, and I didn't had a lot of big breaks, and um, but just, I, I I chose to come back here because I just seen like. You know, this is my canvas here in Dayton too, and, yeah. and you know, working with Jason and, and my man Jay Lee Shout Moves out Media. To Jason. Yeah, it's just been a lot that I've seen. Like, you know, just helping out. I I don't like really using the word culture, but helping out our uh, our culture. footprint yeah. of like what Dayton can provide and the talent we have. Absolutely. Um, last Absolutely. two questions. Okay, I'm good. First, um, free consultation. Just on this question. Uh huh. Key advice to telling somebody that you would tell somebody about um, becoming an entrepreneur. Just one key thing that is just like, what do they need to understand when it comes to entrepreneurship? You got to believe in yourself when when nobody else is. You got to you got to fall in love with it. You got to wake up every day. No matter if you get one likes or 200, you got to know that you you the one and it's going to take off and be consistent. Because there's going to be times where nobody clapping for you and you're still going to have to clap for yourself. I'm just getting my flowers at nine years. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. everybody know Tate now. But like you said, you probably came to some of my events and didn't even know who I was back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, people get their flowers just a matter of time. But it's about being consistent even when nobody's seeing you or clapping for you and showing up for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um. You might already answer this, but uh, I ask everybody this. Mm -hmm. Um, A good quote or a piece of advice that you live off of? Um, A good quote or a piece of advice I live off of? Let me think. That's a good one. Oh, she's been answering all these questions I got her on this one. I know, (laughs) because it's like so many rolling through my head. Um, Show up as you. That's, that's that's the best advice. And I'm only saying that because I can't always say I showed up as me. I showed up as what Dayton wanted me to be. And it drained me. And it made me sick. And it just, like, took me out. So now I show up as me. Yeah, if my jeans too tight, oh, well, don't like the picture. If you don't like what I say, oh, well, keep scrolling. Yep. Anything like that. But one thing I'm going to do from this point on is show up as me. I'm authentically me. And you can roll with it or not. But I'm going to show up as me. Unapologetic. Yeah, this I'm I'm Tay, and this is what you're gonna get. You're Period. gonna get all this Tay. <laughs> Period. Miss Tay Winston, thank you so much for blessing thank my you. platform, having this transparency talk with me. I know and hope y'all people will catch some gems from this and just understand that it ain't easy. We make it look easy, and you gotta understand. I want to um, say one more thing. Oh, go ahead, you got it. I just want to say, too, please be on the lookout for Ambiance Bar and Suites coming downtown. We are revealing our building in the next couple of days. We had to transition and get another space, but we are downtown. We have a 7,000-square-foot building, and me and my brother will be going live on Monday to share that with you. And this is going to be the hub for all the hottest events. Um, it's not. I'm not so much doing a club. I'm more so bringing back like all the poetry fun and all the stuff where you got to put those clothes on come have a good time and get entertained so 
Yeah. Be on the lookout. There you go. <laughs> Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Y'all keep dreaming. We out. Dreamers Welcome Podcast.